AWS CLI aliases allow you to shorten commonly used commands similar to how aliases work for Bash Terminal. So here is an example of um, uh, setting up uh, CLI aliases. The way you would uh, configure this is you'd have to create a new file called alias in your home directory in that hidden folder called .aws in a subfolder called CLI. Uh, all commands appear under the top level group. If there's other levels of groups, I have no idea what you can do with them. But if you carefully look at this example, notice that we are creating an alias called Amazon Linux AMIs, and basically it's describing images on EC2 with all of these parameters. So now what I can do is I can type in AWS and then Amazon Linux AMIs. And so we should just say that the AWS CLI will just pick up the file. You don't need to load it, refresh it, or activate it. The reason I have to state that is because when you use bash profile, a lot of times when you update aliases in there, you have to refresh it. But for this, you don't have to do anything in particular. Uh, you cannot override existing command flags. So for example, here we have uh, uh, a new alias called hello, and we have EC2 des describe hyphen VPCs and the output is JSON. And so the idea is that when we go ahead and actually execute this command, notice that we put output table, but notice that the result is JSON because here we put an output JSON, you can't override it down below when you actually execute it, but you can append new commands. So let's say we have EC2 describe BBCs. Uh, what we can do now is add output table to it, and that's going to allow us to have some customization. So you have to consider uh, what you want to put in the alias and what you want to leave out if you want to uh, tweak it later on. They, these aliases come in two formats. The first is simple alias. This is a one line command that maps to an alias. So um, here we have uh, BPC W2. And so I guess the W2 is to say list all VPCs in West US West 2. And we have it as a one line command. This one here also is a one line command, but notice I'm using the backslash to break it up into a multi line command, but we still consider this a one line command. So just be aware that you have a bit more flexibility there. So single line um, uh, there. Uh, notice that uh, you exclude AWS in, in front of when writing aliases. So that's another thing I should point out. You don't need to put AWS in there whatsoever. Um, the alias commands, again, can be multi-line as uh, I've shown here with the backslashes. The other format allows for a lot more flexibility. This is where you have a bash alias. And so the alias is going to trigger a bash script for more complex logic. So here um, we have a command called bucket. And then the idea is we are uh, wrapping it in this uh, F or this function here. And then with inside of this, it's actually going to go ahead and execute some stuff here. So that is how you know where the uh, script content starts. And so here we can run AWS bucket, my bucket, US East one. And so what we're able to do is we're actually able to provide uh, parameters as uh, the input here. So normally we wouldn't be able to do this, but now with this, we can do that. So it gives you more flexibility. So the idea is that bash aliases are pretty much for provide, providing um, parameters. And the other one is just you have straightforward single commands. So hopefully that makes sense. In terms of uh, how much I actually use, the, uh, use this in uh, my day to day, I really don't use it ever. Um, it does seem like a cool feature, but for whatever reason, I just find it easier to make bash scripts. So you decide what works for you. If you're working on a team, uh, having an alias file could be very useful to share with your team. So it's not a bad idea, but again, in practice, I don't find myself using aliases too often.